morning and welcome to the very first West Coast road trip diaries. We are about to go pick up our van that we are going to be living in for the next, I think it's like three and a half weeks. I think we have it for 25 nights, maybe 26, basically a month. And today is day one. We are leaving Perth this morning. We're running a tiny bit late. So we need to check out of this hostel and go and pick up our van. I'm going to do a full van tour. So I'm not going to waffle on. I'm just going to head, but I am so excited for this next bit of our journey. Good news is I can stand the camera on the dashboard. We've just picked the van up. We have come to Bunnings, which if you've never been to Australia, it's basically B and Q. It's just a hardware store, and we are going to buy like camping chairs and a table. They offered that with the sale of the van, but it was more expensive than what it would be to buy them from Bunnings. We're just going to pick up our own. Tom is in the driver's seat. How are you feeling? There's a lot to learn with it. It's big, guys. Uh, ah, it's not that big. It's actually not that big to drive. It's I don't know. The gears are quite difficult, and the the handbrake is different to anything mm. i've ever used before it's a manual guys so, uh, which i think is actually a bit of a hindrance like at home i've only ever driven manual which i think is fine in a car but like this is quite a big vehicle to be like manually driven yeah no it'd be fine once you're on the road but the stop starting of it isn't the best i would have preferred a automatic for this but it's uh, it wasn't. anyway i'm gonna do you a little van tour so we have booked this through travelers autobahn we just booked their like cheapest i'll be honest with you it's called the chubby camper it's okay it's good it's perfect for what we need it for it is quite old though like everything looks sort of like kind of falling apart a bit but it's fine i feel like that's the like traveler vibe like i'll show you the why was i gonna call this the cockpit like the dash i guess so like this is what i'm looking at it reminds me of my very first car when i drove like a Vauxhall Corsa. it's got everything we need it's got this kind of cd player thing but we have actually added a bluetooth transmitter so we can connect our phone to it so that's working quite well we have closed all the vents at the moment guys because you guys know that i'm scared the spiders um and huntsman spiders specifically apparently like vans no they don't no i think i've made that up you've made that up it's fine it's so small they're not gonna get in here no um but we are about to buy some like bug spray from bunnings because our friends in adelaide really recommended the specific one where basically you spray the areas and all of the surfaces then end up with this like chemical on that repel bugs and not even just for spiders for mozzies for like flies for just insects. I don't want insects in the we van. We should uh, go do that now. So yeah, we're going to head to Bunnings and that is the first mission is to spray the van. Here she is in all her glory. You can kind of get a scale for it, guys. This is a normal size parking space and it takes up the entirety of it. So it's not absolutely huge. Like it is fairly small for a van, but obviously bigger than a car. I'll show you the inside. This is the back, guys. We've got this much room. I mean, I was saying I'm going to give you a tour, but basically currently our bags are just here. So maybe I'm going to be better showing you this section later, but this is like the sleeping section it does also do up so you can move this and you can make this into a table with two chairs either side so i'll show you that later but it does have quite a lot of storage like under here and then obviously when it's set up to be a table and chairs that is going to be a lot more ideal included in the booking we did also get pillows and sleeping bags and then we've paid a little bit extra to have a heater because it is pretty chilly in an evening at the moment guys this is the main bit i would say this is basically the kitchen we've got a sink with running water here we've got all of our amenities that we'll need like down at the bottom so we've got plates bowls mugs pots and pans for cooking on down here and then this is stove that we're going to be using with the gas canisters so it's actually come with six gas canisters and apparently one one gas canister kind of lasts about a week obviously depending on how much you're cooking the only thing it doesn't have is a fridge we have got an ice box or they call it an esky so we're going to go and stock this up with ice and then anything we want to stay cool is going to be popped in here we're going to try and have like food that you can store so like pasta rice that sort of stuff but yeah this is really really good like this is bigger than i thought it would be we've got a whole like surface here as well which is really good and then this section at the back well it comes with tea bags which is pretty good but then we also have like knives cutlery basically but yeah i don't think that this is too shabby and then up here we have these baskets kind of along the side i've seen people storing shoes in here but, but i guess you could really put anything in here bikinis that kind of thing if you're like getting changed quickly to go to the beach all of this is uh just handy to have the storage in here is a lot more than i thought it was going to be which is really good because obviously right now we do have a lot of bags but we aren't going to keep it looking like this so I'll show you it when we have put the stuff away and we've made it a bit more homely and got the sleeping bags out. I want to try and find some fairy lights, guys. I really have a vision for this. So yeah. Oh, God, that is really heavy. Oh. I'm going to close this up. And now we're going to head to Woolworths, aren't we? Yeah. Dock up on some food and some ice for the esky.
So a little update guys, Bunnings didn't have any collapsible chairs. The only ones they had were like the ones you'd get in a classroom at school, like you know the little plasticky kind of ones. And they don't collapse, so that wouldn't have really been ideal or comfortable. So we're gonna head to Woolworths, see if they have any, but I really doubt they do. Um, so we're just gonna see if we pass another Bunnings on the way, but like we don't really need them today specifically, but it's just once we leave Perth, we are gonna be a little bit more off the grid. But then having said that, the Margaret River region, which is where we're heading today, quite popular. So maybe they do have a Bunnings. I hate it when you end up near the pool even though we've done nothing nice wrong car, well, yeah but like i am just so paranoid they've asked this car to pull over i just watched the whole thing happen and i'm really stressed about it. even though they're not going to do that to us i'm like what if they think that we can't drive properly we just got two camping chairs and a picnic blanket for 21 dollars, which is about 11 pounds that is actually so decent and they were charging us 60 for this at the camp van place we have ended up in aldi doing a shop guys there's not very many aldis around like central australia well central australia like in the cities there's less aldis oh pancake mix yeah that's what we said anyway what i was saying was in the city centers there's not as many aldis as there are coles and woolworths so it's usually easier to just go to coles or woolworths but the fact that there is one here it's definitely a lot cheaper Real me to get it going open me up sweet talking like you mean it but you're making it so complicated and hate it every time i get too close you push me away don't want to stick telling me you don't want any obligations and how you hate them we have arrived in Bustleton. It was about a two hour 20 drive from the place that we picked the van up. So not awful. I feel as though my scale of distance is going to change quite a lot the longer we are doing this route because I'm like two hours is so near but at home I'm like two hours is a long way. But anyway Bustleton is the first stop and this is famous because it has the longest pier in the southern hemisphere and it goes all the way out to sea for like two kilometers so it's pretty crazy actually so this is it guys i'm not actually too sure where it ends i presume like the kind of thing that's over there at the end of it i'm not sure that we're gonna walk it all because it is a long way and we want to get to the campsite before dark definitely gonna cover a little bit of distance it's a really nice beach actually this is thomas so you can actually do this by train guys this is how long this jetty is there is the option to get the train <laughs> yours maybe i'm not i think about it way too much and every single thought is making me so this is shelter guys this is a famous distillery here in bustleton we are looking for somewhere to have lunch or like dinner even or just a drink on this route i really recommend here even though we've not been just because i've seen so many good reviews on youtube and stuff and also they do distill everything in house as well which i always think is pretty cool have arrived at the first campsite. I don't know if campsite is the right word. It's for like caravan motorhomes. Is this? Is it a campsite still? It is, isn't it? We are staying at the Margaret River Tourist Park and we have just pretty much got set up. Tom has been cooking on the stove. I actually didn't film it, but I'll show you what it looks like now. Basically on the ground because we didn't buy a table, but we definitely do need to buy one. Tom has just been cooking up some burgers in this pan. They actually look pretty good. Like they're, they're not looking too bad at all. We've got butter, we've got cheese, we've got salad here. It's definitely, it could be worse. I'm gonna update you properly in the morning because tonight has been like us unpacking the bag, settling in, sorting the bed out, like finding out what's what and we've done it all in the dark. We don't have a light or anything for like the outside. It's been a challenge and I'm gonna update you when it is daylight so you can actually see but this is basically the setup. We have all of our stuff behind us here. This is the front so I imagine these are like the driver's seats and then this is the back of the van. This is my pillow and then behind us we have the kitchen but like I say you will get a lot better of a feel for this in the morning morning because it's pitch black and we're obviously like in it right now i feel like to see it we need to not be in the van because it's very like well, it's not very small but like you can't really be in it and film it other than like at this angle anyway the lights are flickering so let's all pray that i get a decent night's sleep i'm quite nervous about the bugs but we haven't seen any yet so let's all keep our fingers crossed <laughs> Yeah. 
Not bad. Look at that. Not bad. Guys, come on, it's me. Like I did everything else, but Master Chef over here. Well done. Here is a better picture, guys, of what the bed looked like last night. I mean, it still looks a mess. I think. So you can see Tom, he's over here. Hi. Better in the daylight now. So this is where we slept. Looks a bit messy. Didn't have a heater on the pillow. But got two pillows and then two sleeping bags, which we undid and laid like one as a down sheet and then one as a like double duvet kind of thing. We've undone our bags, so this looks a bit messy. I think my favourite bit is probably the back. This is the little kitchenette. We bought this, which is 10 litres of water, which we can like decant, which I think is actually a really good idea. We've stopped the shelves kind of in an organised fashion. It's organising the camp. It's an organised mess. It's not like the most organised because obviously we have to have like the plates, the bowls, everything in here as well. Um, but it's not bad. And then we, we do actually have a sink with water, which is also really good. And then I actually made Tom a cappuccino. I'm actually, actually really, really impressed. Good. There's a kettle here on the campsite and we bought these little sachets that are like pre-made like cappuccino and they froth and everything and then you get the little chocolate powder with them so it's like having a proper coffee so yeah i don't think this looks that bad haven't messed it up yet and i haven't stalled it and i don't want to jinx it but i'll tell us on that i've got to go I have just successfully driven us here, which I am shocked about. Not because it's successful, because obviously I wasn't that negative about myself. I'm more impressed that I actually decided to drive, because last night I was like, oh God, I don't think I'll ever drive this. Like, it's so big. And then this morning I just woke up and I was like, look, you're doing it today, because otherwise you won't do it. It was actually fine. It was like, actually okay. Anyway, we have come to a place called Hamelin Bay, or Hamelin Bay. And basically this is famous because you can see stingrays on the beach. Like, apparently they just swim, like, right up to the shore. But that is predominantly in the summer months and it is obviously winter in Australia right now So I don't know if we are gonna see any but either way apparently it's a really nice beach a really nice bay And we're gonna go and have a look for some stingrays and fingers crossed We're gonna see them I don't wanna be a 4 a.m. I'm suffocating Just by waiting on you So don't call me just cause you don't Okay guys, I've put on a tiny bit more makeup, not much, and because we have come for lunch at a vineyard. So the whole reason that the Margaret River is famous and is our first stop on our like southwest leg of this journey is because it is a really famous wine region. So, so many wines that we get in the UK come from Western Australia, specifically from this area. I have genuinely never been anywhere where it is just vineyard after vineyard after vineyard. We have been driving for, I think it was about 20 kilometers and it's just one right after the other after the other so we picked one that had a restaurant because we don't really want to do a wine tasting obviously we are in the van and it wouldn't really be fair for like me to do it and tom not to do it or vice versa so vice versa let's face it that would have been the way around well only because you don't really like wine and i do like wine i do like wine but i wouldn't have had a say in it <laughs> That is not true. Joking. But what we've done instead is come to one where we can have like a nice lunch. I've driven here and then I can have a wine and Tom can drive back. But they do like wood fired pizza. Apparently the menu is like Mediterranean inspired. So this is basically, it's called Swings and Roundabouts. It is on Cave Road, which if you come to the Margaret River is like the main stretch of road where all the vineyards are. So I'm super excited to go and have some lunch because I'm very hungry. Maybe I'm yours, maybe I'm not I think about it way too much and every single thought is making me Sleepless Making me Sleepless Give me something straight from your heart Got the fruity rosé, according to the lady that served me it. Sort of does make me sad that it's not on like a stemmed glass. I know that's a ridiculous thing to say, but it does sort of look like Ribena or something. But this place is just stunning. Food was very good. Oh my god, the pizzas were insane. Wood fired pizza, there was something about a wood fired pizza. It's the worst of my heart, I'm pretty confident. I've had um, I've had one of their roses. I asked the lady that works here to like recommend one. She picked this fruity one and it was very, very nice. And I feel a tiny bit drunk off it. And I'm like, is it just because I've not eaten much? One very small glass of wine would not usually make me feel tipsy, so I don't really know. But anyway, I think on the way back we're gonna actually head to the Margaret River Chocolate Factory because that is like the next stop on the way back to where we're staying. And I don't really know what it is about places in Australia having like regular chocolate factories, but there's there's quite a few of them around. We went to one on the Great Ocean Road as well, but anyway, that's gonna be our next stop. We are here at the Margaret River Chocolate 
factory established in 1999. Bit like me. It's chocolate the corker. Oh, we might have to buy one. Tom's helping himself to the complimentary chocolates. You guys have to watch the TikTok I posted from this day because honestly, this was just cracking me up. But this shop is insane, guys. They have every chocolate item you could ever imagine in every flavor and every variant. It's insane. You can also view it all being made, guys. Oh, look, here's Chocolate the Quokka. Didn't really look like a Quokka, to be honest. Um, but look, this is the chocolate factory. It's insane, they're making clusters right now. Tom, why are you standing on that? You're tall enough already. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I brought my four-year-old child. This is incredibly unideal, guys. I don't really know how much the camera's picking up, but it's literally borderline flooding on the roads. Like, this rain is just coming down so fast and out of nowhere as well. Like, it was so sunny this morning. We are in the actual town now, guys. This is Margaret River Town. We've come for a little wander, mainly to go to Coles and to the pharmacy, but also to sit somewhere and have a drink because we have been able to walk here from the campsite. I would actually say, guys, the location of this campsite is pretty good. Like, it's walkable to everything you would need, which, yeah, is a win. Should have filmed it when it was full, guys, but we have come for a little drink in one of the... It's kind of like a tavern, isn't it? Or an ale house. So it's called the Settlers. Settlers Tavern. Oh, it is called the Tavern. And now we're going to go and pick up some bits that we're going to cook for dinner that we didn't buy yesterday so that is our next port call but yeah it's really cute in here it's like a proper english looking pub guys we have bought a camping light so tonight we can actually see while we eat because last night we ate in the pitch black tom has been food prepping his lunch for the next few days he's made six chicken wraps but he's eaten two of them tonight so four chicken wraps not bad though who says you can't meal prep in the back of a van they're pretty good <laughs> this is the current setup guys our stuff down this end this is actually very long guys so like when my head is on the pillow my feet sort of end around about here it's pretty spacious isn't it it's pretty good yeah see you in the morning Okay guys, I am gonna end this vlog here because I feel as though it's probably been quite long because we did like a little camper van tour and kind of this was just an intro into van life. I feel as though the first two days and the three days we've really been finding our feet with like a routine and working out whose jobs are whose and who's doing what and like predominantly Tom definitely has been doing a lot the first three days. I think that that was always going to be the case just because even though I have driven, Tom is a more confident driver than me and would prefer to drive. Like I don't want you guys to be like, she's not driving at all Tom actually would rather do the driving because he feels safer when he's driving himself and I am inclined to agree with him yeah I definitely think that as we get more into it it will just become a bit of a pattern a bit of a routine like I am happy to do breakfast I'm happy to do the food shopping I'm happy to do the bed the bed has been my job folding away the bed because we're deciding if we're gonna like have it as a bed every day so like right now we still have it like flat but obviously yesterday we converted it into a table which actually does take a bit of time because you have to move everything out convert it and then build the table and then like pack it all away again but i definitely do think we've settled into a bit of a routine tom has returned from filling up the van he looks really confused you all right I just want to see the price. Oh, I'm just ending the first the first road trip vlog because I'm going to do Albany to Esperance as its own video. How do you think that the first three days of van living have gone? Good, I think we're getting used to it. That's what I was just saying, yeah. like getting into a routine. Yeah, I think um, to start with there was a lot to like deal with, like mm -hmm. different things that we're not used to and now we've done like two nights of it, it's all sort of second nature already which is making everything easier. Definitely think that when we get to this next campsite I'll know what to do yeah. a bit better because I've never been to a campsite before guys. Like. For First night there was a, there was a lot of stuff we needed to set up in the van and out the van that we that we uh, well I haven't done in a while and you've never done no uh, so it was just yeah just getting used to everything again but mm -hmm. like again the second night we flew through it so I'm excited yeah. I think from here on out hopefully it's going to be smooth sailing fingers crossed it when be. it comes to the van at least anyway but yeah I'm going to end this vlog here and I'm going to pick you up pretty much where we leave off because today we are heading to Albany which is a town in Australia's southwest and we are doing it via several stops along the way so I'm excited for the next vlog also going to be going to Esperance which is like the most famous place in Western Australia one of them Southwestern Australia anyway bye guys bye thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe also because I actually was looking at my stats yesterday almost 50% of people watching the vlogs aren't subscribed so if you could subscribe if you could give it a thumbs up all the engagement really really helps with with boosting the content on YouTube and it is always super appreciated so I shall see you in the next video bye guys